Oh, it looks like we are live. Or we are live. <laughs> so much for a preview. <laughs> Is it working? We'll find out. All right, BB says loud and clear. I'm flying blind over here. First time. <laughs> First time. Maiden last voyage year. with the Corey Congelio, the maestro. Ah, yeah. We got a couple so, minutes. So I'm going to be to the folks. All join. Yeah, they're all joining us here. Good to see some of my regular folks, Michael and Ron. Remember, like, uh, what was that? Reading Rainbow, or, or no, what was it with the the, the mirror? It was, and I see Jimmy, and I see Steve. What oh, I was know. that? That kid's show? Somebody back me up on that. We know what that is, right? Got some New Mexico, the UK, Italy. Sweet. Man. Worldwide. That's right. This is awesome. Belgium. Yeah. Killer. Any chance, you know, uh, any chance of what... Uh, they can guess what we were listening to while we were setting up this stuff. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I was like Van Halen Marathon. I was just like, yes! So good. On the playlist, constant, yeah. constant oh, stream. Dude. You can't, yeah. can't get any better. Awesome. Is it all sounding good? Everything's Everybody's working? Set, yeah. Sweet! Man, we got a, we got a good... Uh, I love it when things just work. <laughs> <laughs> and we weren't figuring it out up until yeah. like five minutes. Wait, 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 let's test, let's test Corey Cam. Let's see if Corey Cam works. Corey Cam works. Look at that. Yes! Oh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, wait, wait, up, oh, wait, oh. there we go, and back, and court, up, oh, wait, there we go. It's like I got any toys to play with. <laughs> I gotta get one of those. You're the Switch Master over there. Switch like, Master General. Yeah, switch me up, Scotty. Yeah, that's Looks right. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, dude, here we are. What are we doing today? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, <laughs> I set them up, you know. Wait, wait, now. wait. There it is. Oh, oh, where's mine? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm without a drink. Where? Yeah, where is yours? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Your, your mug. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I do have my own CC mug. Oh, here's mine. This there is the go. little sunshine. It's your bright, mug. sunshiny day. That's right. Yeah, this is a partridge family over here. <laughs> it's what kind of art we're becoming is like all happy. Yeah. You know. Hey, cheers to uh, a new course launch day. Blue Thanks. Rock Connection. Thanks for having me, man. This guy's stepping it up. Mm. You guys, I mean. Just trying to catch up to you, man. Oh, please. <laughs> please, please, please. So, uh, popular topic. Yeah. Mixing major, minor. That's and so wait, there's more? Chromatic there's so lines. much more. Chromatic yeah. lines. Is that, because, that not the most fun you've ever had on guitar? Because you can play any note and make it work. R right. No just mistakes. Don't land on the wrong one. <laughs> Which we just heard. Yeah. Eddie does like the uh, 10 note, single note climb up to a bent note. Yeah, or that too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Just like, keep going until you hit the right one. As long as you know, like it's like a cat yeah. flying out. You, you know, I watched a video on a squirrel the other day and how oh, they like kind of oh, find yeah. their, it's, it's like some radar shit. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Squirrel, that, that's a uh, squirrel tonics. Squirrel nut zipper. <laughs> it's a new scale. Squirrel scale. All right. So. So how we got? We got a hundred. We got 129 people already. Well, sweet. Man. Thank man. you for this joining awesome. us here in my my maiden voyage in my little studio. Yeah, here. this is your first like it real is. stream. Let me tell you how it is back in my Please. day when we were streaming. Yeah. <laughs> Uphill both ways in the snow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I have not done a stream since I lived in California with Marty. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, like. Like this kind of a live stream. I have enough of those coffees. I'll have a strong stream. Oh, bro, we'll be auctioneering. <laughs> and sold. Marshall I'll be sold. Like, Gotta go to the bathroom. I'll see. You. Yeah. <laughs> so gotta, uh, where do where do we begin, Maestro? Man, this is all about you. Where, today. Wherever you want. I mean, we're probably gonna get a lot of questions about. Let me turn this down because I can hear you talking to me five seconds oh, later. Nice. Which is like oh. it happens in my dreams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Um, people are gonna have a lot of questions about the course. Okay. And. We should, maybe that's, should we tell the story? Please do. So, we worked together for like a year on Complete Blues Volume 1. Yeah. You moved, came here, we finished it, all that kind of stuff, and got it out, and it's been yeah. gangbusters. Yeah. People it's really like really, it. It's done really, 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 really yeah, good. Yeah, it's been... Well, and it's cool because it's, um, 
it gives you really practical things. Like if, if you're, you know, have played blues before, like right. all of us have, right? We know our major pentatonic, minor pentatonic, and, you know, basic shuffles and that kind of stuff. It's like that next evolution in, you know, okay, now, to, now how do I make it a little bit more sophisticated? What kind of chords can I use? How do I play if there's another guitar player? Right. Right, which is, you know, 101. If you go to a blues jam and everyone's playing the same chord and the same feel, it just can be a big mess. So, yeah. um, what I really liked about it and the reason I wanted to bring you in is I like you have a very specific way that you combine a lot of different styles together. Right. And um, whether it's funk or blues or rock or any of that kind of stuff, it's kind of all in your wheelhouse. But I wanted like a more in depth, um, Kind of course and and getting inside your brain like where where all the influences come from right and how can we create you know a volume of courses that gives you a step by step into maybe where blues originated and then how it's infused into rock and you know in your case you can do country really well and so how but the root of it all is blues you know it is for me it's totally different approaches yeah to the same the same stuff yeah but we don't always see it so plainly in front of us. Sure. So it helps to have what I always call like a tour guide yeah. telling you this. I just thought of this. If Complete Blues Volume 1 is like the super highway, mm -hmm. then Blues Rock Connection is a back alley. Ooh, nice. You know? And because you want to you see what's going on over there. You want some edge. You get exactly. the edge yeah. in the back alley. So, so we, uh, we, we Are these the addictive licks that you get in the back alley? Oh, I mean... <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna have a, a problem yeah. for a long no <laughs> at least I hope so. A good problem. That means you keep coming back to the to the dang lessons. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know you want a little extra hair on your amp. You want to yeah. you want to play with a little Give more. A, wait wait so so wait hold on let me, before you do it. <laughs> so Corey like he's like man I bought a Marshall and I'm like I don't know if I like it you know and I was like really and so he I've been hearing about this Marshall without ever really hearing it and he brought it over the other day and I plugged in my my gold top to it and I'm just like dude. <laughs> You literally said, what? What is, more do you need? Yeah, right. I mean, it's like you just plug straight in. I'm like, well, that's solid gold. I mean, it was just, so I give him a little taste. I feel like it, it's got all that. Dude, and you're not even where you were. Wait, let's show him where you were. So, one thing. Doesn't uh, suck. People always ask about the aux. Why do you have an aux? Yeah. And so, you know, through this whole progression of, of buying amps and having a bunch of amps at my disposal, I've always had to default to master volume amps and then use like pedals as the, the platform. Right. And I think the number one thing that has just blown me away about the aux is when you can get the back end of the amp up, you actually turn down the gain and it's like, I don't, I don't even have a pedal board anymore. Right. Just straight in. Yep. No, and just, this is your this is your pedal board. Yeah, that's right my pedal board. Here. And the cool thing is, is like when the amp and the guitar is right, it works. Yeah. You know, so I'm about I'm about three quarters of the way down. Yeah. And it's just punchy. Yeah. Oh, check you out, uh-huh, just throwing it in there, you gotta do it. It's not even my jam, but you just can't not do not it. Do it yeah. You get a whammy bar and a yeah. Marshall, it's over. It's like instant uh, eddification into your yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, which... Or uh, classic rock in but general. But of course, like, he's super bluesy too, you mm -hmm. know, we're, let's talk about, we'll talk about some examples of like, the ideas in this course, yeah. and the, the overwhelming thing is the major minor pentatonic, mm -hmm. which I could be, I could teach from now until you know, the cows come home yeah. and they still be, good. They'd Sorry. be mooing yeah. oh. in major <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the, the jokes are free because I write <laughs> shitty ones. They'll They're be not here all course. day. And not in the court. But um so when we're listening to like an Eddie kind of thing, yeah. you know, if you were doing a uh, you know, if you're doing like a rock shuffle yeah. or something, mm -hmm. there's no when you play, this is it's always hard to kind of say, well, how can I talk about this from a different angle? Mm -hmm. Why does the major minor pentatonic thing work over rock? Yeah. Here's a good reason. When you're playing a power chord, yeah. there's no third. In yeah. You don't have to minor commit. or major, so yeah. you don't have to commit. Yeah. Exactly. So if you played, make sure I'm in tune. Uh -huh. I tune because I care. Yeah, that's right. So if, um, if you played like an E5, like a, just like a just power chord. Yeah. 
major. Play it again. I mean, come That's on. That's all I'm doing. That's, right I mean, what, what more do you need? Major and minor pentatonics, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so how do we do that? And what I did was I devised two long solos that mm -hmm. are, uh, one is a uh, kind of a funk rock blues yeah. sort of a thing. Killer rhythm parts in it too. For sure. Like those alone yeah. are a lesson in itself. Chord clusters. Yeah, it yeah. is It is a, a, a two for one. It's a whole, and that's the other thing that we do in the course is it's a whole guitar approach. It's not just lead anymore. Right. It's, it's rhythm and lead. Yeah, so to me, the value is really important. Yeah. You know, you get a personal connection with a lot of the students and customers, people I've known for years. I want them to say, why do I need this? What is valuable about it? I have mm -hmm. all these other courses. Why do mm -hmm. I need this? And it's because it's, it's always a two-for-one package with what we do. Two-for? It's a two-for. I like that. <laughs> Blue light special? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> um, where do they begin, Maestro? So, so this is going to start out with two solos mm -hmm. that are, one is that funk rock kind of thing. It's going to be kind of a... a okay. That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. All those kind of little embellishments yeah. will be in the rhythm part. Which is great for if you're a second guitar player. Exactly, because you're kind of getting out of the way of the other guitar player. I talk mm -hmm. about that when it comes to other instruments, but not with other guitars. And as I meet a lot of these students and have personal connection and Zoom lessons, they'll say, hey, I'm playing with my buddy, and when he goes here, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, let's talk mm -hmm. about some things, you know, and making these little small chord oh. moves, yeah. we'll find ways, you know, and... The example in the solo, should you learn it note for note? Sure, if you want to. Yeah. But what I do is since I break it up into verses, mm -hmm. each one is then separated. So you yeah. can say, I really like what's in verse two. Mm -hmm. It's got this cool fast lick I want to play. Great. Right. Verse one, the rhythm part is awesome. Study that. They're all broken up Yeah. For that. So when you take a, um, a groove like that, there's a, a line I start out the solo with. Here, make yeah. minor, yep. major. Flowers, yeah. do the other one? Exactly. Uh, Biker, kicking the flower. <laughs> but you hear how just in one bar, yeah. it's like, you know. Well, and I like the, the, the approach on that specific solo too, because you, you take them through what strictly major pentatonic sounds like, right. then strictly minor, and then what happens when you fuse the two together. Right, and I try to clearly point out like this is the overlap <laughs> mm -hmm. that happens, and it's one fret, and it usually has to do with either a major third or a yeah. minor third. Like, yeah, that's the you know, So when you're, yeah. that's very major, mm -hmm. minor third. Because yeah. if you think about it, here's, yeah. Right, and then you're gonna have, um, yep. Or uh, do you do you um do you think from a when you mix major and minor do you think from a minor box injecting major into it or how do you see it? Well, what I've done over the years is uh, transcribe enough solos mm -hmm. to get a little bit of a head start. Yeah. Like so, if I'm playing something that's like. Mm -hmm. That's connecting all the boxes in a major. Yeah. So I see little pieces in there. Yep. So let's say you take an idea like that, which is inherently major. Then I look to go back minor. Okay. Because I know that's going to sound cool. Yeah. And I'll tell you another thing about that in a moment. But if I did something like that. I'm gonna me, look wait, hold the, on. Let me give you a little guitar cam. Yeah, I'm gonna look at the closest. That's right. Um, there we go. There we go. I'm gonna look at the closest option. So here's the here's for instance an idea where I would draw inspiration from uh, to build the solo that we're building, and then also when you learn my solos, you're gonna 
He's a camera switcher, man. <laughs> well, you know, Mr. you're camera talking. Switcher. I don't want him no, not to see good. your face. Okay, no, got no. it. Um, so if I learned solos and drew inspiration from them yeah. to come up with my own things, perhaps you can do that with the solos that I've written okay. here because it's meant to be super digestible from lick to lick to lick I to lick. Like that. You know? It's just like the enzymes to soloing. Oh, man, it's like <laughs> photosynthesis. Yeah, it's uh, okay. osmosis. Soloing enzymes, okay. So, no, oh, wait, hold on. Here we good, go. So give me that. Go. So okay. when, you, when you play a line that's inherently major pentatonic, what I'm looking for is then maybe, what's my nearest minor pentatonic in the key of G? So G minor. So then I say, okay, well, that's a cool line. Come down with a minor. So that's all minor. So you heard, so if we did it up to tempo, it's any kind of tempo, like two, three, four. Ah. Start to kind of see them and you can bounce back and forth. That's interesting. So also, I look at those, I had a student, I had a student yesterday, and I said to him, said to him, he's like, tell me how you learn. Tell me from the ground up. So I won't bore you with that. Someday we'll do it. What? Come on, dude. We're here. We're, that's why we're here. Let's go. No. So he said, tell me how you learned. So I learned minor pentatonic first. Uh -huh. Then I learned, so, so I'll do it. So this is like, so we'll start A minor pentatonic. I learned that. Mm -hmm. And my instructor said, let's do, so go, guitar camming. You know? nah, I'm with you. So everybody knows that, right? Or at least we think a lot of people know that. And then he said, well, I'm going to put this note in there, that, in what you already know, called the blue note, or the flat five. Uh. And he didn't call it the blues scale, yeah. and he didn't call the pentatonic the rock scale. Yeah. He said, this is the pentatonic, and here's a note you're gonna add. Yeah. So it kind of started to organize it better. Yeah. So I got instant chromatics happening yeah. now. Yeah. And then I also have like, um, you know, oh, so any kind out. of like, yeah. oh well kind yeah. of sound. So then those light bulbs started going off. So then he said, okay, we're going to move that to F sharp minor, which is going to give us A major pentatonic. Mm -hmm. And then when you do the flat five note, that same movement there, it actually Still kind of works. sneaks in the minor, the minor yeah. third there. Um, or, yeah, because that would be a C, and that, if you guessed it, overlaps right mm -hmm. into the... Uh, minor pentatonic in pattern one. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Same fingerings. Well, and if you're, if you're just learning that, um, I think the other thing that people, when they, when they learn something like that and they see that, or, or hear, immediately go and find where the octaves of those notes are because you're yeah, gonna, great. like in position two, you know, you'll see it like, right? So now yep. when you're in this, you have that note in there. And the cool thing is it starts to set up three note per string yep. runs inside of a blues sure. scale, which is sure. awesome. So if you played like, just like an A power chord thing, mm -hmm. yeah, any kind of rhythm you want. So I could do, so there's that first example I showed you. I'm going to move it down to the more main. Now I'm going to do them both quickly. And I never stay 
on one too long right. when I'm doing that kind of thing because I want to go. So it's nice. those. It's now, now we'll bring it full circle to what that student asked me the other day. He said, "Well, how do you know what to do when?" Okay. And this is the esoteric portion of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Over one chord. Over one chord. Okay. You, know, you have to kind of. We get spiritual too. Oh man, God, this is great. It's gonna be all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so you got this proverbial scale toolbox that you carry around with you, mm -hmm. right? And each one of those tools does a certain job or gives you a certain sound mm -hmm. or something like that. And it's up to you to pull out the, the tool for the job. How do you do that? Well, when you go in and you wanna paint a wall, yeah. you, know, you don't say to yourself, well, let me demo it first and then I'll paint all the scraps. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you're saying, okay, I, I, I don't bring a hammer to a painting job. Mm -hmm. You know, just like I don't play, I don't do Eddie tapping over an Almond Brothers song. Yeah. Again, no rules, yeah. certainly could. Yeah. Um, and that might be the coolest thing ever. Right. But if you're trying to evoke that sound of what mm. you've been hearing, because oh, a lot of people are probably doing invoke, you're getting, you know, yeah, totally. You I have to pull. <laughs> you have to pull the, the right <laughs> instrument, the right tool out. Right. So that goes on in my brain. It fires off instantly. So the the song completely determines my choices. Yeah. So if it's um, you know, if it's let's say it's a very major sounding. <laughs> Yeah, my man. brain doesn't say, oh, that sounds like yeah. Born Under a Bad Sign. Mm -hmm. It sounds like, you know, an Olive Brothers thing, yeah. you know. Um, or if I'm playing something that's, and that's the cool thing about the connection with the blues is because once you have the dominant seven thing going on in there, mm -hmm. you have the... Wait, sh show them what dominant seven sure. is. Just so let's say you have just a simple G7 chord. Wait, there we go. So let's say you have just a simple G7 chord. You have notes in here that are, you have the third, which is very important, and then you have that flat seven. So that flat seven is gonna work well for the pentatonic. Ooh, nice. But then you have the third. Okay. Flat seven, major thirds, and both of those are happening right inside of each other. Minor. Okay, so you're you're fusing together position one and and minor and two and major. Correct. Yeah, minor one and major two. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. But you don't play it like that, which is the right. This is the trick. Yeah. So the sound, the thing is, you have to know what, like a switchboard operator, what sound you want to infuse where. So if we're having So you want a tough blues sound, go minor. Never hit a major third. Now we're gonna go. A little sweeter, a little more melodic. Now I wanna get down home. It's two different sounds. When I hear that, that sounds like, if you want my loving, that, like Aretha Franklin song. Oh, check you. Yeah, if you want my loving. Go to a seat like, if you really do. Oh, right, because you got the. Yeah, right so, there. so it's. Show them that trick real quick. Yeah, so. So they think about it. When you're thinking, of, when you go to that nine chord, perfect example to go to minor. So when you're playing the blues, it's a wonderful exercise. You know, and it doesn't have to be, you know. Uh, yeah. It can be, you know, 
when I hear that Aretha Franklin song, just pulled it off the top of my head, to me that's blues. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, there's an old version of Otis Rush covering it, and he plays it instrumentally. And yeah. it's, it's super cool. So you can have over that one chord. <laughs> Major. Two. Let's let's jam. Two, three. Both G, chords. Seven. Go to the nine. Three. Now we're gonna go minor. So, and then somebody's gonna say, well, what do I do on the five? What do I do on the turnaround? Yeah. That's kind of what I, I just like roll the dice yeah. on it. You know, it's do what, because I say, I pull from what sound do you want? This mm -hmm. is liberating. You have sounds, you have a yeah. minor sound. You have minor blues down home, mm -hmm. major, little sweeter, more tucked yeah. buttoned up. You well, know? you know, and what you can do also is um, if you if you just, I, I think people get hung up because they try to cover big chunks of the fretboard at once. Yeah. But if you stuck to a position, you know, and that's your first chord, well, you know your minor scales right there, and you showed them that where that two is. Right. Just look at what the notes of the chords are. Yeah, it fits right in there. You know, I mean, it shows you exactly where you need to go. And then here. Yep. This is cool because there's yep. notes of major and minor Correct. in there. So, like, these little, uh, that, yep. that kind of stuff. 100%. So, um, a fun way to think about it is one chord's major, four chord's minor, and five chord's yeah, good place to fuse. I, I agree. I agree totally. Um, no, I think it's uh, what I want to clear up though is that this isn't a course that teaches you that way. No. This is something that's like, hey, this is a little bit of flash. This is some yeah. fun, uh, some fun solos. And I would recommend, like I said earlier when we first started this, was I learned it from learning licks. Yeah. But the licks that I was learning, I didn't have Dickie Betts sitting there saying, right. okay, son, this is how you do it. Yeah. Like, that's kind of me. I get to do that for you guys with a solo that I write. Yeah, you and know? you know, honestly, so, and, and there's nothing against, I love blues courses just as much as anybody, but it's been done so much. What, what I personally, and a lot of, it seems like my crowd likes, is that fusion of blues and rock. Right. Right, whether it's uh, coming from like a Led Zeppelin approach or even more modern bands or stuff yeah. from the 70s and 80s where it's, it's rock and roll, yeah. you know, and then how do you do that? Like the Almond Brothers is a great example because they don't, A, they don't just play pentatonic licks, but it's right. like, it's, it's, it's melody. It's not just, you know, 12 bar blues anymore. Right. It, it's taking it a step beyond. And that's really kind of where I'm wanting everything to go, sure. you know, out there too. The blues is, is great. And you've got a ton of stuff that lays down really solid foundations on that already. Right. And so um, what I haven't been seeing, you know, I, I always tell this, this story, but I remember back in the day, I think, I don't know who you were on tour with, but you know, I'd seen all your courses before and, and everything. And then there was a, a, a clip of you on stage somewhere, just freaking <laughs> lighting up. And I was just like, who is that dude? Right. I mean, and I've never seen you play like Jeff too. It's the yeah. same thing. And so, um, you know, in my mind, it's like, you know, that's, that fits, you know, like I always like to bring people in to my world and like, you know, like you or Jeff or anybody, and, and like, how do you guys do what you do? Because, you know, you especially too, you play, you know, arenas and stuff like that. So, you know, at any given time, somebody could say, Corey, take a solo, you know? Yeah. And you got to be able to do something cool right. over a lot of styles. Like the, you had one where it's country, so you can do blues and rock and then other stuff where they're singer songwriter. And it's right. like, now it's melody, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, that was one of the main reasons I, I, I wanted to bring you in, especially for a couple of courses, just so it's like a well-rounded thing. We all know and love the blues at this point, but like, how do we start going beyond? So we covered the kind of the first step of how to get out of just 12, standard 12 bar blues with right. the first one. This one, you know, since we couldn't film together, you know, in the beginning was, I'm like, well, let's just do something where it's kind of like, prepping him for the second one, although it ended up being a perfect standalone course on its own. Sure. But starting to get into that other, like how do we push it into other musical directions? Because, you know, let's face it, you know, if any of the players out there have a cover gig, 
You're yeah. going to be playing. You're not going to be playing blues songs, you know, unless it's a strictly blues gig. But you're not going to be playing that all night. I have a, a a guy that might be on here today who I've done some Zoom lessons with, where I know he's bought all my courses, mm-hmm. but he's jamming with guys and they aren't playing blues. Yeah, you know, they're playing like '90s rock mm-hmm. songs right. and stuff. And that, although like. I can translate that because I've worked on it enough. Yeah. But like somebody who's just studied my blues courses or somebody else's or whatever is not going to know how to translate yeah. that to something that's G C D. Yeah. Or that's why in these examples, like in that funky blues rock example, I'll put a bridge in it and go to E minor. Yeah. Then a F. Yeah. Then a yeah. And over that E minor, you can then go into Yeah. Which is a whole other thing because then that's G major pentatonic mm-hmm. that works over the E minor yeah. chord, and I explain all that. Yeah. So it's more real world kind of thing. Like, you know, if I was, we were listening to Neil Young the other day, yeah, and it was like, yeah, like I used to play that when I was a kid, like yeah. fourteen, in my talent show. To me, it was just all E minor pentatonic, right? But also, I knew it was G major pentatonic mm-hmm. at the same time. Yeah. So all that stuff's kind of important to always be getting a foot into a different style to kind of push you to know your fretboard more, yeah. the theory a little bit of it mm-hmm. more. It helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like Eddie said, it's music theory, not music fact. Oh, that was my favorite that was quote. such a good interview. I was like, all right, stop. I'm yeah. done. That's it. it it's, it's from an interview where they're in uh, touring his home studio. In like, what was like, in like 90s. Yeah, you know? yeah. So good. Oh, we Eddie. should check the chat. We're, we got the computer kind of far away, so I got it on my phone. Um... We are live from a rainy Nashville. How does BB Ninja know it's raining here? You must have checked that forecast. We got to yeah, thank the window's not even going right? the window. We got to thank our moderator BB Ninja for being here. Um, Bill Horniak says that he purchased the new course yesterday. He's loving it. Awesome. Been playing thank for 30 for years, support. still learning new stuff all the time. He highly yeah. recommends it. Sweet. Um, that's awesome. Thanks, man. Um, he's, I think Corey is underrated. I own some of his courses. He taught me a lot. Thank you, home guitar player. What a great name. That's great. Ron says, should I ever go to a jam or sit in? I can say everything has to be in A minor. That's for the first time. That's, that's fine. Go for it. Um, we, are, we are definitely live. Papa does hybrid. He does hybrid all the time. Um, <laughs> Cheat I code. Uh, any questions? Can you start with any cues? Uh, uh, let's see. You guys are just all saying hi. Not a lot of questions. I don't know why. What are you doing? Come on. We're here. Ask us whatever you want. <laughs> No, it's awesome. There are 254 people. Nice. This is freaking That's like badass, a good sized man. club gig. Yeah, for sure. Man, and you're getting some some love from folks that are happy about bringing players like me on onto the scene. Got to bring the best. I, well, still working at it every day, but helpful for folks like you. Uh, yeah, rock, blues, and metal. No rules. That's right. Well, everybody's just saying, hey, thanks for everybody, everybody for being here. Freaking awesome. <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, you got some love for your Univibe stuff. Oh, man. Univibes are so fun. Oh, man, it's the best. Got my DGT. That's right. What's a DGT? This is the DGT right oh, here. Oh, duh. So, real quick, can I, so can I shout out? Oh, yes, cool. please do. So, the green machine? My, my friends at American Musical Supply said, hey, let's do a giveaway. Let's give away a guitar. And you do a lesson on it. And well, if they're giving away it. stuff, why don't they just give me something? <laughs> we got to put you in line. That's <laughs> sweet. For sure. So they're sponsoring a giveaway and giving away this crazy PRS CE24 Semi Hollow. Sounds great. 24 too. frets. Yeah. A um, little bit probably hotter than average pickup in here, but it still covers all the bases. Uh, and tomorrow I drop a demo Perfect video. Perfect for a Blues Rock connection. Perfect for the Blues Rock connection. You get two more frets, too. What? I mean, 24 frets, baby. No, come on. Coil tap. Pattern thin neck. Um, BB probably has a. Uh, Check that out. Yeah, it's super thin. Yeah. I think BB might have a link to the contest too, but I just wanted to drop that in front of y'all while we're here. Thanks, Brett, for letting me do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How do they. Oh, he's got a link for him. He's got a link. He's all set. You uh, he's a pro. BB's a pro. <laughs> pro so moderator. Awesome. So, so <laughs> cool. Thank you, by the way. Um, you want to jam? Yeah, man. You give me, you give me the. Uh, let's do. Let's rock. Because you, you, people don't see you rock very often. Give okay. me a rock and roll progression. And I'll just play rhythm today. Don't get all sophisticated on me. Keep it keep it simple. <laughs>
This ain't your average Corey Congelio day. I mean, it's freaking. Hey, man. Want to take one? No. Come on. No. No. You just do an. You just do an. Uh... You're too good to me. Thank you. <laughs> Dude, it's all about you today. Nah, this... I, I don't need no spotlight. The first, the first live stream, and I get the, I get that. These, these filtered lights are hot. Let me tell you. <laughs> I love those things. Nah. I like the sun. It's so nice. I think it looks great. It looks good. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. So, get, questions? Anything? Anybody got any questions? I mean, they're like talking amongst themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Folks from North Carolina. Uh, I got questions about arpeggios. Uh, let's see here. Thanks, Jason, for the compliment there. Um, so the course level is definitely like intermediate yeah. to yep. quasi late intermediate. Yeah. What I always try to do is when I write a solo that has a lot of techniques mm -hmm. and stuff in it, I um, I try to make it so that it's digestible in smaller pieces. Yeah. Too. So even with Complete Blues Volume One, like, excuse me, that's that's written in a way that you could take little pieces, yeah, regardless of your level. Well, and don't forget, you know, in all these courses that we're doing together, there's half of the course is rhythm, right? So you know, even right. if you can't play lead, there's plenty of examples of you know rhythm and, and how to up your rhythm game, and then you can even the, the solos. Some of them might be fast or whatever, but there's always a takeaway. So right. I would say that, you know, as these, the blues, you know, complete blues series moves on, it is moving in more of an intermediate and beyond direction. Yeah. But that being said, um, I think it like a, you know, beginning intermediate player yeah. could definitely handle. Like um, in that first, that one solo we do, that's a shuffle. I call it sort of my tribute to bad company. Like it's doing that. Yeah. As the rhythm part, yeah. And then when the solo comes, I'm doing kind of like a, a just a typical yeah. sort of seventh chord thing. Yeah. Then when the bridge comes, we did kind of like in that song, we mm -hmm. just play there. Yeah. And I've never even taught a little move like that in a yeah. blues course before. Yeah. So if, like in the, it's not a twelve bar blues. Uh, mm -hmm form that we're soloing over. Yeah. It's just an E7. But I'm kind of laying it down with that rhythm. Yeah. Oh, uh, and then I go. Because yeah. everybody wants it to go to the four, but it goes C, D. Yeah. Then I go. And I made it so there were chords like folks that have been in Complete Blues Volume 1 or some of my other courses probably know. Mm -hmm. Bar chords, easier seventh chords. Yeah. Because then Maybe this is new to you. Okay. And which is just a C with an E in the bass. That's a typical kind of Hendrickson version. Yeah. I'm sure you've taught it a bunch oh, yeah. in your Hendrix stuff. And then up a whole step to D slash F sharp. Okay. And that may be something that's new to somebody that's just playing yeah. blues all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's peppered in slightly. It's one of my you know. favorites. And that's in like yeah. every style of music country, right. rock, right. all sorts of jazz. Yeah, so when you. When you look into a course, don't feel like it's a book that you have to read 
from front to back. Oh, Not at all. Like, just take You're the an small, open book. Always. <laughs> that's the only, I mean, there's like the only way to be. There's yeah. no secrets. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm stealing from people all the time. Like, yeah. Know, well, we all do. I mean, that's, that's, part of the, um, that's part of the thing. And the other, the other cool things about the course that we haven't gone over is there's that cool section in the back that shows you how to use your own Right. 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 It starts getting into psychology of soloing rather like, you know, um, maybe, you know, some standard licks. How can you mix it up by using a slide instead of a bend or, yeah. you know, I mean, very up the phrasing. Something, something simple, like get on the guitar cam. All right. Yeah. Awesome. So if you, you know, you can play. So if you're an A minor pentatonic. And you want to play, why not go and slide with yeah. your first finger? You know, or, you get more the, of that legato. -y the kind cool of. blues, uh, blues note slide. Yeah. And then when you're starting to do the connection of those. Played well, one to slid them. And, and some of the things that you're you're doing, you know, it's also those little tiny like I don't know, semitone bends. Is that what they call them? Like all that little stuff that adds the, you know, that kind of swagger to the right. to the playing. Yeah. You know, in every course I've ever done, I can't stop it because it's part of what I do. Yeah. Is um. Yeah, you can change. Mm -hmm. So it's not a half step or whole step. Yeah. It's, it's a know, tuner. Especially when you're going from like that in a pentatonic scale. Because you're kind of flirting with the flat third at that, yeah. uh, major third at that point. Yeah, very clap and ass. Mm. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We had some questions. What okay. amp are we using? We're using my 74 Marshall plugged into the aux. Brett's using his divided by 13. BTR 23? BTR 23. <sighs> Love both of them. Um, I, I'm going to hit Corey over the head before he can leave. <laughs> steal his amp from him. Uh, Is it 74, so JMP? It's a 74. Mm, yep. So good. Any tips for how to start a solo? Listen to the chords you're playing over. So, yeah, let's, let's go over that. So, yeah. don't give him a, a blues okay. progression. Think of something. What, what's a common... Uh, What's common country rock progression? Um. Oh, G, D, love that. E minor, C. Yeah. So, <clears throat> one of the things that, that um, I would recommend to everybody for about 10, 15 minutes a day if you're going to practice, I mean, we all practice noodling and licks, but like if you're taking that... Um, progression. What was your next chord? Or did you E minor? D. So. E minor. Yeah. Um, take like, you know, the typical, you know, the E shape version of the chords. And then D shape. Right? We got. And you can use either this C or the country C. Yeah. Just try to make a melody out of the shapes themselves, you know? Right? Right? And just find the notes of the... It doesn't have to be like this. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's not a great solo, but it's a starting point. Think, start thinking, instead of thinking licks, Think melody, right? Try to be able to create something that a singer would sing. I think the, the problem is people learn a scale mm -hmm. and that becomes a default like, um, okay, cool, now I can solo, I got a scale. But it doesn't show you where you're supposed to really land. Remember, we're, we're playing over a chord progression, right? So the most important thing of the whole topic is what are the chords doing as I'm soloing? And am I hitting some of those notes? like? these common chords like this. It gives you three perfect spots to land. You got a root, a third, or a fifth. That's three safe notes, right? But they all sound different, right? So if you're...
right? And then to the next chord, was it the D? Yep. If I just took the piece of this chord, okay, and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna concentrate on the G, B, and E. And then I had, okay, so play those two, just. You know, it's like, it, it, don't, don't try to riff and, and play something you know, fancy, just really stick to a melody at first. And then once you start to see those patterns, be able to do that in a different spot of the neck, right? So here's maybe a... And then to a D. Right, and then it's like, well, where's that C? Okay, well, I got a C right here. There's my D chord. G, yep. Uh, wait, where is it? Right? And so it's not about um, being able to riff and to make licks. The, again, we're practicing. It's not going to sound perfect every time. Right. But you're playing, don't even, don't even pick a random chord progression. That's my favorite thing to do. And just look at where you can find those. Let's take a four you know, chord progression. How can you find those four chords in a four fret span? And then just play directly out of how those notes all come together. If you looked at that G, okay, you got, I'm a little out of tune, but. Okay, so now I got, right, so. Right, I know how that E, right, so think of. And then the C is right here. Right? And it's, it's a melody, right? And then when you already have your stock licks that you've worked so hard to learn, then you can start infusing those things together, you know? Then, then you can use your licks, but at the end of the day, if I can get one thing across, I mean, Eddie, all these players, Clapton, Stevie Ray, yeah, they had technique and chops for days, but listen to Dreams, right? That, that Van Halen song off of, uh, what's 5150. It's blues, but it, it follows a melody. There's a melody to the, to the song and the solo. Any good soloist, Neil Sean's another perfect oh, example, absolutely. like Faithfully, you know? Yep. He's not ripping, but that's the most iconic, memorable, you know, it's what, it's what people, when they go to see a band, you can go to a blues jam, and even if you love the blues, like me, I love blues, right? I love Stevie Ray, I love all these people, but after, Four songs, oh, yeah. if the guitar players aren't saying something, I'm out, right. you know, because I want a song, I want a melody, I want something that I can feel like, you want, you want um, resolution, you know, you want something that really goes with, with the music, and that's, you know, I would say, and you do that really well, too. Um, when I'm not yeah. playing but that's stupid fun. fun, you know what I but mean? But that's fun, it's like, yeah. when somebody says jam, let's just, it's, yeah. just because we're doing it doesn't mean I have to make a masterpiece every yeah, time. Yeah, well, and so we're talking fun. about you know. practice, you yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. And so. Um, if you just make that a 10 minute ritual, you know, I gotta say something because you're evoking things. Oh, <laughs> here we go. I if see you it just make out. it a 10 there's minute a, ritual. There's an aura <laughs> around you right now. The purple is, is coming. If you, if you just start to do that, you know, again, take four to five fret chunks and find those four chords in those chunks and then learn how to make melodies out of each of those spots because then the chord shapes are gonna be different and how they fuse together you know, when you, when you look at just how the chords fit together, you're gonna learn modes, you're gonna learn pentatonics, you're gonna learn all this stuff so much better because when you default back to your normal playing, you're gonna have memorable melodies start to be created. And I swear, man, that, that's been the biggest um, revelation to me. You know, when I was backstage, I was at a Guthrie Grove on gig and I was like, dude, how on earth can you play all these different styles, do all this different stuff? And he's like, oh man, just, 
go learn the cage system, you know? And this uh -huh. whole time, you know, like working with Tim and, and all these session guys, none of those guys, like, uh, we, they could be doing a solo and I'm like, oh yeah, that's pentatonic position four. And I remember the, <laughs> I did that with Tim and he's like, oh, is it? Like, they don't even know. They yeah. don't even think like that. I'm like, well, how do you do it? And he's like, a chord's all over the neck. Right. You know? And so you got to think about it. They're in a, they're in a session and you, you know, because yeah. you've been in sessions, they're going to plop a chart in front of you and it's not always going to be in one key. No. It might modulate. It might do all this stuff. And if you can't, you know, see chords and chord tones, you're in trouble. Quick, you know what I mean? Because then everybody at the session is oh, like, the "It's under you're the gun." Yeah. <laughs> so um, the simplicity, you know, is is key, and being able to to practice out of chord shapes, and then add your blues licks, and then it'll have so much more impact, you know. Yeah. Even if it's simple, listen to Brian Adams, right? Keith Scott is oh, a yeah. terrifying guitar player. Freaking Does awesome. he shred anytime? No. There's a great um, is it live at Budokan? There's a great video. If you don't know who Keith Scott is. Freaking awesome, awesome guitar player. He plays the whole night playing basically what's on the album. And then, you know, Brian gives him like one or two songs, like just to cut loose. Right. And you don't even know, but then he busts into some chops and it's like, holy crap, this guy is like sick chops, yeah. you know, yeah. but he doesn't use them because it's not, it doesn't fit right. the song. And so it's good to have the flash and to practice the scales and the runs and all that other stuff, but make melodies more a part of. Well, solos are like songs within a song. Yeah, exactly. Really. So, um, you know, to piggyback off of your vocalist thing, the the other missing piece is um, the rhythmic aspect yeah. or the phrasing of it. So, if you took that same chord progression, if we went... Ba -da -da, ba -da -da, ba -da -da. Now play different notes. Back in your so, trick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. that was perfect. Yeah. But um, I started off with the ba da da yeah. da. You know, I did a interview with Tim, and yeah. we did this lesson on the like master. the yeah. He's like uh, Yoda. Yeah. Um, and he he said, "Oh, I always use that." And I was like, "Tell me about the nursery rhyme approach." Yeah. And he, so what I did was I took. This tune, Three Blind Mice. Yeah. Which is. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And it's. Ba, da, 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 da. Yeah. So it's. Uh, I could play. Just the A. So. Doesn't have to be that at all. So I put the blues lick in at the yeah. end as like a bam. It's yeah. like, you know, but the Smack whole thing is like, ice. get your, shut your mouth. <laughs> the whole thing was based off of da da yeah. da. And you never would know. But yeah. that could be your inspiration. It could be something as simple as that. Yeah. And also, you know, when you're when you're doing approaches like that, it's it's you create a uh, reoccurring melody. You know, because some of those chords they're gonna share the same notes. So that works perfect. You can create 
two phrases that are the same essentially, and on the third one, go someplace right. different. So know? here's the other thing is that, um, I swear I had a good point. Oh my gosh. It's kind uh, of, no, no, I mean. Uh, hey, I, I, hey, drink a cup of sunshine. Uh, 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 <laughs> no, but please, please, please. please. The answer's in there somewhere. Yeah, it totally is. No, but um, the the rhythm of the melody yeah. is is so, so important. No one will ever know where it came from yeah. or what it spawned off of. And then you can elevate it with that rock lick you've been saving mm -hmm. the whole time. And, oh, I know what it was, I was going to say. Um, recording yourself do that is so, so oh, important. Oh, it's so good. Because you're going to actually, you're going to be like, this is boring. It's not playing fast enough. Mm -hmm. This is not cool. And then you watch it back, you're like, oh, that's actually pretty musical. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I demo like <laughs> something on like song. Instagram or something, yeah. I'm like, mistake. Yeah. Then I'm like, all right, just play something simple. Oh, that yeah. actually sounds really good. Yeah. yeah. No, that's... We, see, same thing happens for us. And I think that any good, you know, one of my favorite players ever, obviously, is, uh, is Neil Sean. I talk about him all the time. But he's a perfect example because he can rip, like the Departure album. Yes. If you guys have never heard the Departure album, listen to that album. It's ridiculous because it's like, if you want to talk about blues and rock fusion together, mm -hmm. it's one of the most perfect examples of that ever. But I remember when I was watching an interview with him, they're like, how do you, you know, create such memorable melodies? And he's like, I spent a huge part of my life learning vocal lines mm. and so you brought up Aretha Franklin and he's yeah. like Aretha Franklin and he started naming I mean even like Mariah Carey and all these other players he sits and he figures out m vocal lines yeah. because he's got the blues chops already you know you've spent his whole life playing blues too but then on top of that you can really uh, play like like a vocalist would and the, and the cool thing about learning a vocal line is it teaches you the importance of space too because they can't, you run out of air. You got to exactly. breathe That's at some point. point, you know. So um, try doing that. Get get a really simple. If you even if you even look at Steve Perry's vocal melodies, it's yep. easy to figure them out. Yeah, you know? they're just all in the normal scale. Yeah, and they then, all play. And then use that like listen to his vibrato, and then try to like cop the vibrato of the voice and all that other stuff. And it really For trains sure. you to think in a different way about yeah. the guitar because it's so easy to learn. You know, scales like as soon as I found out that mixing major and minor, you had all that stuff. I'm like, right. oh, cool. You just want to do that, you right. know? And it, right. sure, that's fun and it's part of it. But if you're thinking that you want to play in a band, mm -hmm. that you're not gonna. Well, that's that, what I, I try to try to tie it back to the course. Yeah. The the two main performance solos, both rhythm and the lead part, yeah. is. What's, what's cool about that is you should, any material that you get, mm -hmm. you should try to play along with it. Yeah. Whether you fall on your face or not, the constant, constant repetition of that, because your brain is super smart yeah. and it's going to keep making adjustments mm -hmm. all the time. So those adjustments will then come out in your playing when there's nobody else around. Yeah. And I realize a lot of you probably watching this are like, well, I'm never going to play with the band. I just play at home. Yeah. I play to a looper or whatever. That's cool. But working on courses that we do, um, where it's like a real life situation mm -hmm. or preparing you for that is going to translate to your playing just by yourself. Yeah. You know, constantly, for sure. Uh, somebody asked uh, a couple questions. There this is fun. Questions. I can oh, do this yeah. live stream thing it's, more often. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was that, Brian? Do you remember the Brian Adams record? Uh, you can listen to any of the records, but like his first... Oh, oh yeah. So that was a YouTube clip. I think it was live at Budokan. So go and just type in Brian Adams live. Any of the stuff. I mean, even the 80s stuff is killer too. Back when Shred was yeah. it and he's still. Still. Just Could you imagine that? that? But like, his vibrato and his feel, it's like it has that. You can tell he's a ripping guitar player because his feel is right. so good. And it's like, well, this guy's just holding back because he's playing to the song. But like him specifically, if you want to really start to learn how to play rock guitar yep. really well, he is a person I would definitely just start learning Brian Adams tunes. Because the songs, super and they're super simple. Yeah. Right? He's not a, a crazy, Brian Adams isn't a crazy guitar player. So they're very like four chord rock songs, all about melody. Yep. And, and, it's, and it's taking blues licks and making really cool melodies out of them. Some people are really digging the, uh, the stuff that we were just teaching there on, yeah. the, on the melodies and all that stuff. Um, so somebody asked, is this stuff in the course? We'll put it this way, when I write these solos, yeah. here what I do is I think about all that stuff as I'm writing. It's not me 
recording and just these aren't one one takers. Yeah. I'd like to I'd like to say that I sat down on one take and nailed it, but that does not happen. <laughs> Never happens because to me I what I do is I write the rhythm parts yeah. and I say okay these are good chords to you know interject and introduce if somebody hasn't played these or if they have played them how can I put them in yeah. a real world scenario. That's first thing I do. Yeah. Second thing I do is I just start jamming to the track. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, this is gonna be heavy major minor pentatonic driven. How do I create a cool melody yeah. over this? And those melodies are born right from uh, uh, right from what we're talking about. Yeah. Now, a lot of times you, you know, you're in a situation where you can copy what the singer is singing, but in a case like these courses, I'm not doing that because I'm pulling it out of thin air. Yeah. And I'm doing that sort of on my knowledge of yeah. phrasing and yeah. things like that where um, I'm looking, I'm listening to how the, the groove is going in the song, mm -hmm. and then I'm picking up rhythms like that. And if you're savvy enough, once yeah. you physically learn it, then you can kind of see, oh, this is kind of where yeah. he's coming from. Yeah. That's sort of my hope for sure. Um, yeah, and it, to answer your question too, like um, in my courses, the if you do the membership, you get all my courses and a discount on the other courses as well. But I, I have a, like a nine hour course called Caged Unleashed, and it's that's the whole purpose of that course is really to start thinking about how to play around chord tones and fuse it with licks that you already know. Uh, uh, let's see, Mike Anderson is blowing up the feed. He's got a bunch of your courses. Oh, sweet. And he wants Thank to you. know, uh, <laughs> we, I, we don't have the reason the I'm here is because of you. This is because <laughs> of you guys. Thank you. We don't have the camera pointed at the marshal. What do you want to? But they want to talk about the settings. Oh, and I have well, the, hold on a oh, second. Oh, look at this. Ask and ye shall receive. Let's see if I can so get it going. So I am like, I'm kind of new to Marshalls. There we go. So, um, you know, I know when when you just, a lot of folks will just plug into the first, yeah. the top input, right? And mm -hmm. then that's that kind of, it's definitely brash and trebly, but you get kind of the full Monty. You can turn uh, the treble all the way down in that channel. Um, it's treble in a good way too. Yeah, no, it's it's it feels good. Mm -hmm. But what a lot of people do is they'll jump the channel, so we're going from... Because is there a, like a bassy one and a trebly channel? Is yeah, that the, the two okay. is more bassy. So you can kind of dial these in to taste, um, and you'll get a little bit more woof with that uh, second input for woof. sure. So it woof. barks like a dog. But the greatest thing about this amp in particular is how, how it gets clean. Yeah. I am so stealing this amp. Now, I mean, that's not my normal, what I would call my sound, but it sure is fun. <laughs> Should be. <laughs> so, Presence is on straight up. Yeah. We could bass, probably, I mean. You bass could, is off. Yeah, so much. the bass is off because. Because there's a bass player. <laughs> you're him today. Uh, we, uh. <laughs> So this is something I talk about all the time when you're doing like recording of any kind yeah. or running gu guitar amps direct through a load box like the Ox or something. And, and you've done videos with Derek Wells before. Mm -hmm. He'll run his Fender, and I've done this on my channel, plug in a Fender, turn it you know, to yeah. a situation like this or a recording, turn the bass almost all the way off. Yeah. Like, Jeff does that too. Yeah, it's just, so. it, it doesn't translate Mm -mm. In a situation like well, this. and a lot of times feeling it live, it's great. It feels great. Live. And a lot of times when people record you, they dump the bass anyways. Exactly, because it needs to get out of the way of the. So bass you just guitar. create less work. That's for right the, for the mixer, which and they love. will love you. Uh, okay, and so then we got middle. Middle's cranking. That's one of the things I don't think people think about. Mids is what kind of cuts you through a whole Absolutely. mix. Absolutely. And so mids are very important. Treble is five. Volume one is like, you know eight ish. Eight. And then volume two is around two. And then on mine, um, the master is at 10. The, the master volume bass is on like straight up, mid straight up, treble is about 10 o'clock. And then the preamp's on about one o'clock. And he's got that master turned up yeah. so that you're getting all that, yeah. that power that, amp is cooking. Yeah, I mean that to me is, um, been the biggest revelation ever. I'd like to thank Universal Audio for making the aux because it allowed <laughs> We're me big to, fans. to get uh, that. But to turn up, uh, you know, a hundred watt head or this, the divided by 13, I never had that amp on more than two my whole time. Wow, owning. really? Yeah, because it just, it was a lot, you know? It's too loud. It was so loud. Um, and so now, you know, I think a lot of what people are searching for with pedals 
is really a, the back end of an amp. It truly is, yeah. you know, and that's, you know, it's uh, pedals were created out of convenience mm -hmm. and, and necessity. Yeah. And a lot, whether it was the early days of the treble booster, or Big mm -hmm. Muff, or whatever, and it was the guitar players that got creative yeah. in doing it. Um, somebody, it's Jason Carter. It's my, it's my Marshall. It's the one you see every Thursday in the background. I actually brought it out of the house. Um, yeah, thanks to James Santiago for sure. BB's giving him a shout. God, out he's there. a wicked player too. He's a great player. There's a the, if you guys haven't seen James Santiago, I think he still has a YouTube channel, and he goes and he shows you how to nail classic tones. Like he does the Edge, I think he does uh, Eric Johnson, he does a bunch of different tones. But the cool thing about the Aux too that I want to talk about is the Aux has like 200 presets in it of yeah. classic songs. Like so there's one that, that just dead ringers, Drop Dead Legs, yeah. there's some killer Hendrix ones. And so you can go through and you know, instead of having a pedal board, you know, you can go through and just mess with the 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 uh, presets that they have, and it's just so much fun. One of these days, I'm gonna learn like 20 or 30 of them, yeah. and do a live stream with just this amp, yeah. because you can you can do that yeah. with this, maybe put a drive pedal in front of it yeah. if you have to, um, but you probably won't, and just with one amp, mm -hmm. get all those sounds, because the, the thing that I like to talk about all the time was that in the golden age of what we liked, yeah. of what we like as guitar players, it wasn't done with pedals, it wasn't, no. you know, pedals mm -hmm. are like the, how can I say it, it's the, the convenience in the toolbox of being able to, oh, we need it to sound like this right now, yeah. I can do that and I don't have to drag yeah. this amp. Which know? really, when pop started coming in is when they really started getting more racks up. But a, a lot of what you hear too, it was funny, I was at uh, uh, Rob McNally's house the other day and um, he had a, what was it, a deluxe reverb. Yeah. And he mic'd it up and he just, he had a Les Paul and he just turned it up to like five and I was like, oh my God. I've heard that sound so many times, assuming it was like maybe a Marshall or right. whatever, and here it is, just this Fender, just little amp that you can turn up, and it's like, that's rock and roll. Like, that's so much of what you hear, but it's, you know, that Marshall turned up, or it's that, you know, small amp. A lot of the great guitar tones ever were recorded on little tiny amps, but just, you know, cranking up Jimmy Page with the yeah, Supro, you the know? Yeah, Supro. I mean, so I did a live stream where we took my Princeton, mm -hmm. put, oh, put the Ox in there. Oh, so cool. Love, that's my favorite. No offense to anybody, that's a Desert Island amp. You yeah. know, I, I can get so much mileage out of it. But what I did was I, I put it on, started around three, yeah. where it's like kind of got some tone and it's clean. Three and a half, four, yeah. five, six, and we went all the way to 10. Yeah. And it was, it did every, you could hear every nuance yeah. uh, in that volume knob. I just watched so the Mike fun. Campbell interview mm -hmm. and uh, they asked him, what what amp would you, you take over everything else? And he said, uh, 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 was a Princeton Reverb. I can't, my love for Mike Campbell knows no bounds. Oh, so I love good. that guy. Um, we're saying Ox, like Oxen. O-X. A-U-X, for sure. Um, the Ox box from uh, Universal Audio. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Fisher coming, yeah, it's coming out of the Ox. It's attenuated. We got 200 likes. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Um, Appreciate that. No speakers are Do used. Do we wear earplugs? What's the volume on? You have the volume is so quiet. Yeah. It's it's unbelievable. Like it's coming through little monitors. Well, you play and talk. Yeah. So here's full on talking, 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 talking. The, um, the volume that you're hearing is what? A, yeah, exactly. The volume that you hear is only so we can hear what we're doing. Yeah. But there's I, no speakers. We were even gonna wear headphones, but then we tested it out, yeah. and it, we thought it sounded really, really great. Um, so I would love to, um, I want to hear some from, uh, uh, more questions. How, how loud is in the room? Not very loud. Can yeah. you talk over it? You're listening to, yeah, yeah, direct sound. You can turn the aux down to a like whisper volume. A whisper volume. volume. Yeah. <laughs> and when I record any of the videos that I do on YouTube, it's, the, it's barely audible. Like the, the sound coming through the monitors yeah. is barely, because you know, we have, shotgun mics and all this other stuff in the room and it becomes just a giant mess if you if you have stuff yeah. loud and so that's the whole reason i got an aux is so i could have the amp sound really good but keep it very controllable so like when Corey's over or i'm doing interviews or whatever too it's it can be i could turn off the aux i mean turn off the speakers yeah. you know and you would that sound that you're hearing would still sound the same right yeah um i would love a couple questions from you that I have for you. Yes. Um, one, somebody asked, what is Brett's favorite or music of choice? 
This might surprise you if you're if you're honest. Um, man, I like a lot of stuff. I mean, all time favorite band is Van Halen for sure, but um, I like jazz a lot too. Like we, you know, at, at home around the house, we listen to a lot of Miles Davis and stuff like that. Um, I like blues, although it's not my main gig. Like I like uh, like Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan and that right. kind of stuff for for blues. Um, although you specifically have been getting me more into old school, which I'm oh, appreciating very much I'm now. I'm happy to do so. Um, and I typically like rock, like classic rock. Yeah. But I've been, I mean, I've gotten in your car before and you have Casey Musgraves on. Oh, you have, I love the you, Golden Hour album is yeah. one of my favorite albums ever. That's, yeah. you mean? So, so, I love singer-songwriters. I yeah. really do. Because, you know, especially in today's day and age, that's the only place where you'll hear truly diverse music that isn't in a formula you know john mayer you know you can hear he he gets to be experimental yeah. with his music but so few artists today you know like in town in nashville well right. like five ten guys maybe write everything you know so it all ends up kind of sounding similar and so when you listen to the singer songwriter people you get that that you know ex expansion and creativity that doesn't sound just so typical so no, she's I, a perfect example there's been a wave of that in yeah. town which is really cool where even the major labels are kind yeah. of becoming more open to yeah. letting artists do their thing well i think stapleton really cool. came and kind of blew that especially in country yeah like oh oh that was a cool sound yeah we can do that again <laughs> yeah it was, that that whole i gotta say i was glad i was in town for yeah. that and i remember yeah you the, toured with stapleton. so i was in the, we were when I was playing with Lucy Silvis. Yeah, we were on the road with John, uh, Brothers Osborne. Yeah, and her husband's John. Monster Osborne. guitar, incredible player. guitar My player. My God, I had his no brother idea. TJ's a great player yeah. too. And like, it's and you should hear them play bass. Like they both play bass. Like John's a classically trained bassist. It's the whole town. It's ridiculous. They're all like that. John plays mandolin like <laughs> as good as anybody. Yeah. Um, but uh, we we're I was on the back of the bus, mm -hmm. and Lucy came running back. She's like, "We got 22 dates with Staples." Oh, I dude. was like, "What?" Yeah. And it was like. Two weeks after we were done with a tour, and yeah. we went right back out. Bro, and playing like the Forum. We I mean, played the Forum. On. We played Red Rocks twice. <laughs> oh, dude. We um, and it was just we played all like a lot of the amphitheater yeah. type things, and we, we played at like seven o'clock when people yeah. were still coming in. So? We listened to the brothers. It was awesome. Yeah. You know, we listened to the brothers. We'd go. We'd go have dinner. We'd come out and we'd just watch Chris from the side yeah, of the stage, so and it good. sounded so better than the record. It so. was. Absolutely Good. incredible. That guy's and, voice is just ridiculous. And how and he's a talk about a, a vibe on yeah. guitar. Perfect example you know? of not being able to do anything flashy, but playing great. I mean, like Neil Young too. You know, like you can go back and listen to that stuff, and it's like, yeah, that's sloppy, but it's it's personality for this it's, song. It's yeah. total personality. It's totally unique to yeah. their thing. And it's unapologetic. So my goal for the next half of my life mm -hmm. is to get to that place because yeah. I started out as somebody who was the side man for everybody had to play everything else mm -hmm. everybody wanted me to play. Yeah. So Not when you all when you all support me this way, yeah. I can go do whatever I want because if, otherwise I, I would just go get a different job. Yeah. I would make music my hobby, but I can't. I'm too invested now. Yeah. You know. So here I am. Well, you're I guess great I at could. it. Well, Come on, dog. Thanks, man. We uh, you have a really killer subscription thing you just started yeah and I think we got links going on for that it'd be awesome yeah you, it's you um, mentioned a little bit about how that works so it's work. all of my courses um, and then it's also there's gonna be stuff in the future with lessons from the teachers right um, the the teachers courses you know like Corey and Robbie they're not included because just personally I, I want them to be able to make as much money as they can so you do get a little bit of a discount on the courses inside the membership but that's one thing I want to clear up. There are though, all the stuff I've done with Tim Pierce is inside the membership as well. So, um, and then there's stuff that isn't in courses. Like uh, I'm doing a Hendrix course right now um, and all of the clips as I make them are popping up inside the membership. So there's stuff that you won't see on, online for, I won't probably be done with that for another month or two. But there's already 30 videos I think from that course there. Um, and I want to make it more like um, in-depth stuff. You know, YouTube has kind of a threshold sometimes of how, how long people will uh, hang in there. But there's other people that want longer, more in-depth explanations. So a lot of what you see on there might be, you know, 25 minutes to an hour. I'm going to start doing a lot more rhythm stuff inside there. And so, yeah. yeah. And then members get a 25% discount on everything else at the site. So Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm super happy to be David. brought in. I feel like I'm kind of the... 
Aside from Tim, like I'm the guinea pig, you yeah. know, which yeah. I, I wear. The, I've, I've been that before. Well, you're the first. I, it, I think we're. I think we're doing. He, he's the first. Uh, stuff. We, we we call it uh, living room lessons. And you're the first. Yeah. You're the maiden voyage. Yeah, it's worked out so far. Awesome. Um, do we have any? I do the occasional Zoom one-on-one -on -one lessons. So mm -hmm. somebody asked that. Um, you can find out about that on my on my website. Um, somebody said another Hendrix course. Yes. So, yes. Um, yes. This and, one is. Uh, I'm super pumped because there's guys in town. Um, this guy Greg Morrow, who, who's uh, Bob Seger's drummer, but it's played on everything you yeah, can imagine. He's he plays drums. Uh, Kenny Greenberg's doing some guitar stuff with me, and it's, I just hired a bunch of just A-list session guys <laughs> to uh, kind of back me up, and it's so awesome. Like the drums alone, I was like, "Oh my god, this is amazing!" But um, it's gonna be another month or two because I actually decided, like, "Oh man, I want." You know, I didn't cover this kind of song. And so I'm yeah. actually, uh, I got another session in two weeks. Nice. It's gonna have more GM tracks, so. Um, and I've been, uh, I've been kinda, on these these courses, the jam tracks, the lot, the performances yeah. of the solos mm -hmm. are real drums yeah. and real bass. I usually play bass on everything, but I use loops. Yeah. But um, I had, my friend Mike Zimmerman played drums on mm -hmm. one. He played with Kenny Rogers up until he died. Oh, come um, on. Yeah, my friend, Luis played bass on that same track, and he played with uh, Trace Adkins, nice. um, Lindsay L, yeah. and he played, uh, and then I have... She is so sweet. She's really, really, in heart, the cool. hardest working girl in this town. So Absolutely. nice. Um, and my friend Pete Wilson, who plays with a couple different uh, players in town, yeah. singer-songwriters in town, um, he's on it too, but I just had the drummer Stanton Moore mm -hmm. do a bunch of tracks for me. Nice. Did like really cool shuffles, really cool like New Orleans-y type yeah. stuff. New so Stanton, New Orleans. So Stanton is uh, in New Orleans. He plays in that band Galactic and he has his own trio and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And I, I loved all that stuff years ago. And I just recently connected with him and I was like, man, would you just make some loops for me? Yeah. You know? And he FaceTimed me and he wanted to make sure I was okay with how I, he mic'd the drums. I was yeah. like, you're the, you're the expert, yeah, you're dude. the drummer. <laughs> <laughs> so, I actually love drums. I'm yeah, a drum nerd. I do, too. But, uh, so it was cool to be a part of that. But um, let's see if there's any more questions here. Um, uh, let's see. Vernon keeps asking about bedroom volume on an amp without hurting your ears. A t attenuator. If you want to use your tube amps, you get an attenuator. And yeah. that's really gonna help. Um, I, don't, I don't play li uh, loud at all. We're, we're so quiet. This right is now. as loud as I play. But we're yeah. using a 50, 50 watt amp. Yeah. That's, I mean, you can hear us talking. That's as loud as I ever play at home. Uh, any phrasing specific courses you can recommend for those of us trying to get off the plateau that we may be stuck on? Um, you know, in this course, all of the solos are derived from my brand of phrasing. Mm -hmm. You know, so the thing is, if you learn someone's phrasing that you like, yeah. that's gonna start to come out. Yeah. And you're playing for yeah. sure. Um, for a lot of us, it was learning solos off of the records that we like. Mm -hmm. But in the day and age of a lot of courses and stuff, we can kind of cherry pick the course that we like and then have that person who played it teach us. Yeah. And that's the missing link. And I think that's yeah. the thing that we do well yeah. is we're able to talk about how what we did, yeah. you know, well enough for people. Mine's yeah. the uh, Cajun Unleashed. It's by far my most popular thing I've ever done, too. Let's see here. What else? Um, Careful with your coffee cup. <laughs> mm. Sold me on the Hendrix course. There you go. Oh, um, I love Hendrix. It's so fun. <laughs> Mike has all Interestingly of enough, so for, so for mine, people wanting to learn major pentatonic, mm -hmm. I would say, in my personal opinion, learning how Hendrix plays off of yes, chord that's shapes. That's and it. How to do that, that'll teach you major pentatonic better than anything. Yeah, you. <laughs> So listen to the song, yeah. and the song is inspiring yeah. the playing, for sure. Yeah. And that's where I think most people that I know who really have a handle on that sound mm -hmm. got it from. Yeah. Or it's some, you know, because I learned it from Stevie Ray, who, guess yeah. what, learned it from Hendrix. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, for sure. <laughs> well, yeah, and Hendrix, you know, from like Little Richard and stuff that he did from R&B style gigs, I mean, that's where all that stuff comes from. I have that record where Hendrix is playing. Oh, that's Richard. right at your house. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool. And it's... Can you imagine like, that gig? Just uh, stumbling into a club and it's Little Richard and it's, Hendrix. It'd be awesome if it was the Hendrix that we came to know yeah. in Little Richard's band. Though. That would be a, like lighting the piano on fire. Oh, that would dear. be so cool. Yeah, man. Anybody else? What else we got? I mean, yeah. we've had like this is fun. 300 people. 
Sweet. Well, thank so you for stopping by. I'm, awesome. I'm planning on doing this, is, this more regularly. This is, is this incredible. a good time for everybody? I'm not ignoring him. I'm just getting the questions mm -hmm. over my phone because the computer's a little far away. Um, yeah. Uh, BB, thank you so much for dropping all the links in there, my friend. Uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun having you. Uh, I saw that um, someone asked about... Oh, uh, Michael Friedman is the Michael Friedman I taught yesterday. That's the question. Oh, <laughs> he nice. said, best speaker for a Princeton, and then BV chimed in and said, uh, Alessandro 12, and that's yeah. what I have in mind. That's what a lot of guys in town it's have, too. It's so good. It just, it turns it into an even better version of itself, yep. for sure. I'd like to have a regular Princeton with a 10 yeah. and run them both. That would well, be it's really a little, cool. it gets you that, a little bit tighter. Yeah, absolutely. It stays absolutely. together a little better. So, play that, just, I'll play an E. No, wait, hold, hold on, hold on, wait, I'm I, wanna, do, I, I wanna hear Smoky Blues from you. All right, we'll you get ready? something, yeah. What were you gonna do? Uh, what the, were you gonna ask me to do? Uh, real quick, let's do this, because BB said, for this chat, can you give them the easiest starter point to switch from major to minor? Yeah, I, do you, you think do it's it? the one to four thing in the blues? That feels like it's probably yeah. the easiest. Well, thing. and um, take your minor pentatonic, and drop in a major chord over the top of it, right? So then you start to get. Position two, right? This right here would be the minor version of that chord. Here's the major version. Now with what Corey was also talking about with the blues note, just those two things alone, right? And learn the octaves. But that's where you would get, if I added the minor pentatonic, which is my framework, would be. And then if I added in that major third, would give me that, right? So, so. Now, if I went one step further and added that blues note, right? Again, pay attention to those octaves. Now you get. Yeah. And that's just adding in uh, right. two things. At dropping in that, that that blues note and dropping in a A major chord inside of an A minor pentatonic scale. Shall I add? Please. <laughs> this is so, it's about you today. So go. Ahead. But uh, ah, that's my two it's cents. On your channel. This that's is, my this two is, cents. This is a team. This is a team. Um, so I think before at least have all of the fingerings down for minor pentatonics because yeah. those are the same fingerings for major pentatonics started in a different spot, mm -hmm. okay? So I wanna lead into that, so follow me here. So here's minor pentatonic, number one in A minor. Right, so we got that. We're gonna take that and move it down to where my pinky is now on the A note. Mm -hmm. And my first finger's on the F sharp. And this is important because F sharp minor which is what this would be, and A major are the same. It's the relative minor of A. So if you played that from A to A, you kind of hear that resolution, right? So now you're seeing how there's a two for one deal happening. Now, what you have to do though, is make sure you play all five patterns in A minor pentatonic, and then all five patterns in A major pentatonic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna fast forward to that. Now you've done that. We're gonna take A minor. And we're gonna take its closest adjoining uh, major friend, which is this shape here, which is normally the same shape as minor pentatonic number two. And I want you to practice them like this. So play each pattern and see them because what's going to happen, you're going to see how closely related they are. Right? So you could start to combine that way. But now check this out. Take three strings from one and three strings from the other. Now you might want to get a chord 
kind of looped behind. So just play me an A. a like five? Yeah, just an A5. Okay, so now you get to choose what sound you want. So go do that again. That's my major sound. I want to go blues. Back to major. I want to do both. something real quick yes everything he said but the only thing I would add to that is so he showed you this put that a minor chord there and concentrate on where the notes of the chords are right because if you you can't play those two scales in the same way when you come down here right so if i did a lick like in minor like just yeah. play a chord okay now if i tried to do that same lick in a major play the same thing Three, four. okay right. so <laughs> Which it is what doesn't, a lot of people do. It doesn't work, okay? And so in this scale, right, if you're just jamming over an A chord, right, pay attention to where the, like in this position, pay attention to where that A chord is, right? It's almost the opposite. Like in, in yep. um, minor, you might go. Now in this scale, you could do this bend, right? So I did this bend. Right? And that bends me up to the third in my minor chord, right? Oh, I'm sorry, the fifth. Now when I bend here, it still works because I'm bending into the third of this chord. Okay, so in this particular spot, that's where I resolve because here's my A chord. Right? I have an A chord here that's still part of that, right? When you hear this southern rock lick, yep. you know? The reason why that lick works and sounds good is you're literally playing an A major chord. Yeah. Right? You've bent into here, which is the third, and you're playing these two notes which are the fifth and the root of that chord. Okay, so when you're doing with what he's talking about, you know, and, and, and learning those scales, that right there is your A minor chord. Root, third, fifth. So do exactly what he's saying and, and but really pay attention to where the chord notes are inside those scales. That gives you the, like we were talking about before, right. where the melody lies, right? So you learn the shape because, yeah, you can blow by that kind of. But that note, that brings me back home, right? So play, play a chord. Three, four. Right, that note right there, bending into an A minor chord. Right, there's my third. There's my root. There's my third. All those licks right there. Root, third, fifth. Then add what he was talking about with the third, or that uh, blues note. Right, but the reason it worked over that lick is I was still landing on right. 
chord towns. Right. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, that they both, I mean, that's, that's really what I would suggest to most people because I think that's what they try to do. So remember, don't play major like you play minor. You well, learn here's, how to resolve. here's what I find happens is we're creatures of habit. Yeah. And we learn this so much. Wait, and wait, it, guitar cam. Yeah. We do this so much. <laughs> And that it feels good. And yeah. I've literally taught people where I'll go, um, okay, the song's in, you know, A major. And they go. Yeah. And that doesn't work because they're using that muscle memory yep. that they've built up. So what I try to do, and this is like actually kind of awesome because where do you get normally a situation where you're getting two points of view that get you from the same mm -hmm. thing to the same place? And that's how... I find that the way I learn guitar yeah. comes. It all comes from yeah. little pieces. I'm gonna pull this brick over here. I'm gonna build my house. Yeah, I'm gonna pull this little Which piece. Which is over exactly here. why I bring players like yeah. you here because it's like I, my point of view gets through to some people. But I, when Corey came to to my house first and we did a lesson together, it was like immediately you taught me like we were doing on our page thing, and I'm like, oh my god, like. You know, and I've watched videos on arpeggios, but you're, he does a really good blues arpeggio video. It was like, like a couple weeks ago or whatever. Yeah. But I'm like, wow, you know, so, so that's why I love bringing people in. And then especially in the courses, you know, in, in every course, there's an interview section where it's like, I get to ask you questions. And right. that's one of the things I always wish that, that I could ask a teacher, you know, is like, what, wait a minute, where did that come from? Where did right. you hear that sound first? All these things, right? And so, um, that's the really cool part about being able to have you here. It's like watching you play. I'm like, oh, I would have never thought of doing it like that. Yeah. You know? No, I get the same thing yeah. from you when I say, I'm like, oh, actually, that makes a lot of sense to say it that way. Because <laughs> um, I'm not like a caged player yeah. by, was by train, you know, <laughs> but it, it some, for some people it really works for. And yeah. then I see, I'm like, oh, there are applications. Sometimes we also call things, the cool thing about this is we all call the same things, different names. Different names, yeah. You know, and that's that's also really cool. But one of the things, back, like just to finish that conversation, is when you're playing those two scales back to back, I always say play root to root. Oh yeah. Find out where those notes are because that's the money all the yeah. time. You can't go wrong landing on, on base root just to, to solidify. Do the same thing here. So if you're playing a run, yeah. you know where they're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. We go back to the chat real quick. Chat it up. Dude, we've been doing this for an hour and a half. I know, it's so fun. I like this Man. live stream thing. Everybody's like, do this again, do this again, do it every week. I'll do it whenever you guys want. Uh, hey, thank, um, Eight Minute Axe says that my Outside Blues Lines courses uh, has the best he's ever taken. That's awesome. Sweet. I like to think that our course is right up there with it for sure. Um, when soloing, how do you learn to not make involuntary funny faces? Why would you, why would you want to that's stop part that? Of it. That's part of it. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I first started taking guitar lessons, there was this guy, Ed, that worked there. And he was like, just, he looked like somebody that had made, like an older guy that had made a deal with the devil. He just uh -huh. had that like... Huge handlebar mustache. <laughs> this is back in the old days. Ripped at blues, but had like a hot pink BC Rich. And he's like, you talked about the lemon juice face. You always got to make the lemon, lemon juice. Lemon juice, squeeze my like, lemon till the juice. Yeah, like just that's bitter beer face. Do you ever, yeah, do you ever see those memes where it's like, like how a musician compliments another musician? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. It's part of it. That is, that's so So funny. the other thing, one other thing um, I wanted to talk about when they were talking about do melody. It. Yeah is just hit an open E uh, like, note. Sure. So, I'm gonna concentrate on chords, right? Don't forget about the connection between, you know, your, your heart, or whatever you wanna call it, with a note, right? Everyone, um, rushes because we get anxious <laughs> yeah and we're like oh i gotta fill the space and you don't right so keep give me a, like a, a drone so yep yep like don't be afraid to just chill on a note and see like what two sound like together
right? So don't just like do a slow bend. Cool thing about just doing a drone mm -hmm. is you can hit the, mi the minor too. And then. And then you can do the major minor thing. But don't rush to get to another note, you know? Let your brain start to hear the note it wants to, because you're, you're gonna do this and your brain is gonna start to hear sounds, right? Yep. That wh whatever music comes from, it's gonna start if you let it and you slow down, it's like it's like anything, you know. If you you know people talk about meditation and you know like whether it's you know whoever you want to think about, you know uh, Steve Jobs or any of these guys, right? They 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 all say that it came when they were in a quiet space, right. you know what I mean? And so when you slow down and you start to really like zone in on a note, right? Can you do that again? Really like let your brain start to hear where it wants to go. And the cool thing about that is you can, you know, if you just concentrate on E mm -hmm. and E chords, you know, you can you can see those chord shapes, you know, on the right. So if I want that that uh, major sound. Right now I want to take it back to minor. Like so I just did that and I'm like, nah, that's not what my brain wants to hear. That's just like I'm, I just let it go. Right. You know what I mean? And I, right. and I defaulted to something that was, you know, just in my bag. And so try to hear how to play with those two sounds. That's a really great way to learn major and minor because it's two sounds. Okay, right? Here's the minor. Right. You can blend those two. Yeah, the droning of one chord is cool because yeah. then anything you play against it, it creates something. Yeah. You know, if you do uh, a D against it, yeah, flat seven, right? You know, there's your blues. Totally. You know, six five. Yeah. But if you do that, here's another way to kind of, if you are having trouble with that kind of idea, if it's a little too uh, uh, non-restrictive, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can do something that. Um, I learned, I think it was maybe from like Lee Rittenauer or something years ago, where oh, well. you just play like a chord like that, but we'll, we'll, we'll attach a little bit of a tempo to it. Okay. Just give me the drone, like yeah. two, three, like four, what? anything. Yeah, just only play, only play whole notes. Okay. So you're just gonna go. What's a whole note? Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three. So if you go. You're stuck with it. You know what I mean? Like you can't move yeah. on until you've completed yeah. that rhythm of there. And then yeah. once you do it, you can go one, two, three, four. 
before we start to half notes. solo yeah. right there at like yeah. the ground level yeah. so you can still hunt and peck and yeah. find stuff fun, fun stuff but then I attach a rhythm to it so it's almost like well if you play the note that doesn't sound good you're kind yeah. of stuck there and you're like I'm never going back to that yeah. again over there, you know, <laughs> to get that kind of sound he's an interesting example I, I dropped an amp off to him once and you he had like a, a cool little space in a I think it was like Santa Monica or something but eight feet high like Amps? Thousands, no, of books on, on music. Oh, like wow, that doesn't surprise me. Tons, and he had a piano, and like it was, you know what I mean? Like just deep dive into music. But, but it's interesting because those guys, they, they immerse themselves in how to, you know, really mm -hmm. be, be a musician. That's cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, questions, questions, questions. There's a, um, let's see here. Everybody loves that guitar. Everybody loves that guitar. Nash, you can yep. buy them just like it. You love when you add the thirds or six. That's what Freddie says. Can't think of any other way to spend a Saturday afternoon than hanging out, talking, and playing guitar. That's what we love. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Um, why does my confidence go out the window when playing with others? I get nervous and can't put nothing together. My goal is to play live. Four hours a day for 10 years. Seems like that would get me past that. Not necessarily. Wow. It's That's from Steve. Nerves too. Yeah. You gotta learn how to calm your... Again, like what I was saying before, do stuff like that, you know, where it's just a drone and you learn how to say a lot with just a little bit. Um, because when people ask you to come up, a lot of people get nervous and they just start starting to play notes and then what happens is you get locked into that paradigm of like I gotta keep playing I gotta be and then all of a sudden if you're nervous at the same time it's easy to have yeah. some sort of a train wreck right yeah. but um yeah just go go on there and just be afraid don't be afraid to, to hang in one spot and also again keep coming back to it but learn how to play a progression in one spot you know mm -hmm. and nine times out of ten too when you're on a gig this <laughs> gets more of a reaction from people than any ripping you're ever going to do. Like that's when unanimously guys and girls are like, yeah, and you think it's like, because it's familiar. You're playing yeah. something that, that people can relate to, you know? Chuck found something that worked and went yeah. with it, you know? A couple questions. So somebody said, what's up with the JHS pedal shirt? Because it says JHS pedals suck. That's, mm. They sell it on their website. Yeah. It's like their sort of satirical like, tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, their Great stuff's pedals. awesome, and they have, like, the most incredible YouTube channel. Oh, so, his channel's so, so awesome. So good. So good. And I've, I've seen it get, we all have, get better yeah. and better. Yeah. But um, they, they've been super cool to me, yeah. for sure. They're awesome. Um, what was the other question? But to go along with the, oh, to that, with the playing, being nervous, yeah, playing in front of people. Guy. Tell um, us repetition so the thing is if you're not able to do it you don't get a lot of practice so the next best thing is trying to play along with songs i had i had a student say i never play along to songs and i'm like you should probably start because that's going to give you like a real yeah. world um sort of uh experience yeah as close, having like, to play start so, to finish yeah i had a happens. cassette like i had mixtapes when i was a kid and i come home from school and i put them in and i play along to them whether i knew the whole song or mm -hmm. not sometimes yeah. i just go to the solo sometimes i leave the solo out sometimes mm -hmm. i'd screw up the whole thing because you have verses that are the same, mm -hmm. choruses that are probably the same, yeah. maybe a bridge that's different. So you don't have a whole lot to learn in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. It might seem like that to someone starting out and is being a daunting thing to learn one song. But as you start to learn more songs, it's going to be um, it's going to be a lot easier. Yeah. And that's going to take a load off of your, you know, sort of nervousness for sure. And whatever you practice, whenever you play live, it never translates 100%. Mm -mm. So you have to be able to kind of make little adjustments. Mm -hmm. And that's not always the easiest thing to do, but it's just like when an athlete watches the film from the game, mm -hmm. they're making little corrections yeah. all the time. Record yourself playing with, with other people. Um, 
Record yourself playing by yourself. Yeah. Try to play a song with a drum beat or a metronome yeah. or something like that. Something oh. that is a, a a standard of time yeah. to correct you. And then you're gonna be like, oh, I really screwed up there when I went to the bridge. I was late on that chord change. I gotta come in and nail it next yep. time. And especially uh, lead playing. Like if they ask you to sit in, you know it's 12 bar blues and you know, A, you don't have to start on the one. You don't have to like immediately, like the solo, you can just kick back for a measure. Yeah. Also, what helps is listen to what the other instruments, try to listen to like the drummer or something like that that takes the focus all completely off of you and you being worried about what you're going to play. Just like relax into it and, and listen to what the drums are doing so you can kind of get inside that. You know, you always hear people say pocket. Right. But get inside that feel and, and you don't have to rush and do something incredible. Just so oh. two, two stories for that. For one, when somebody would invite me to sit in on a gig, yeah. if I was just there watching their band or whatever, I would make sure that I played whatever I played was the sharpest thing in my bag because mm -hmm. I didn't want to look like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> so I played the, the thing, I, even if it's the same lick I've been playing for years, yeah. I still did it yeah. because nobody cares. Yeah. You know, I'm not playing Listen for Listen to them. Van Halen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember learning... Uh, Little Wing, the Stevie Ray Vaughan version, oh, virtually so note for good. note when I was yeah. the, when I was young, and that kind of like put me on a path. I'm like, man, he repeated himself a bunch of times, mm -hmm. or I learned a bunch of his solo, and he repeated himself often because it was his it was his voice, his bag, yeah. you know, it was his thing, and he did it unapologetically. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no like, I get stuck and a lot in, of those licks were somebody else's, of course, <laughs> yeah, the Albert Kings and yeah. Hendrix and all that stuff. But so there's that, and when I was on tour last year. With David Lee Murphy, we would play this. We played this song he wrote for. So David Lee Murphy wrote like eighteen number ones. You know, he's got a bunch of songs. And we would play this uh, song that went. That's like the whole song. Mm -hmm. And at the end, I get to kind of go yeah. for it, right? And for the first couple shows, I was like going. <laughs> Then I was like, all right, let me think about this. Yeah. And I went. Yeah. And you could hear over the in-ears. Yeah. 20,000 people in a, in, a, in a basketball arena. Yeah. It was, it was they were feeling it. Yeah. Because it was longer and drawn out. Yeah. And then I would like play a little fast lick and yeah. then go back to um, the rhythm part and we'd be done. You yeah. know, but it was like, it took me like three, five shows. Yeah. I'm watching myself back on some video and be like, oh man, you're just like going, yeah. you don't need to do that. Yeah. Like, and it was, it was a good test yeah. for sure. Yeah, so, yeah. so play what you know, and what you feel really confident in first, mm -hmm. you know, serve the song. Absolutely. Uh, coming up on two hours. Holy You want to call it at two hours? Yeah, we can do um, that. How close are we? We're, it's about 15 minutes. All right. Thank you for moderating. My goodness. I didn't know you were going to be having to hang out this long. <laughs> Um, have you, uh, let's see here. Question. Is there any, an exercise for a nice rhythm playing when others are soloing? Um, That's a great question. It's a really good question. It dep I mean, less is more mm -hmm. for sure, always. Um, and that's what, <laughs> funny, Jason just posted that as well. Um, less is more 100%. And um, listen to what the bass and drums are doing, and you want to try to be, being right with them mm -hmm. is a cool thing, but it's gonna really sound like a funner, more fun bed of music to the soloist when you're kind of, like if they're going, um, if they're doing that, and let's say you want to just go, I'm out of tune like crazy. So, so let it ring a little. So, Try to feel upbeats, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Feel upbeats, feel different gong? spots. What's that? You banging a gong right there? Banging a gong. So. I've been jamming to These are, must be old strings. So let's say it's like that. You could do a number of different things. For instance, I'm. I'm just, I'll chug it. You chug you, that. And... Let's say we want to do something major.
let it ring while the person's kind of... Find different ways to play like kind of the same old major chords mm -hmm. is fun. And then also just a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just kind of... It's like a, maybe a dominant seven idea. Mm -hmm. I'll just kind of let it ring. And I also, if they're kind of, if they're playing down there as a soloist, I'll play up there, you know. Now when they go, I'll probably play something a little bit lower yeah. to kind of com offset, you know, the pitches and, mm -hmm. and the timbre. And offset sort of the pitches. Oh, offset all them pitches. Sons of sons of pitches. So yeah, um, that's without knowing the song. And yeah. Without knowing, it's it's not always the easiest thing. Um, so yeah. All right. The official moderator of YouTube, BB Ninja. <laughs> He's uh, awesome. Yeah. Thank we, you again. We really appreciate it, bro. Um, all right, let's see here. Let's, yeah. Well, any other thing? Anything else? We got about 10 minutes or so. This has been the kickoff to Blues Rock Connection. Thank you for having me on yet Please. another course. Thank the course you for that was another course. The course that was, oh, my pleasure. De derived from a global pandemic. Yeah. You know, Life gives you lemons. Yeah. Make so, lemonade. There's uh, a little bit of a preview on the sales yes. page. I'm going to be sure. making more previews too. Yeah. So you'll, you'll, you get an idea of what's going yeah, on. Yeah, we'll, we'll cut it up and add some more stuff to it so that <laughs> cut it up. Mm -hmm. Cut the cake. Cut the cake. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Blues Rock. We got links in there for a special deal. Yeah. Uh, uh, blues, uh, complete blues volume one is yes. is living and and so growing you, and it, breathing. And yeah, and if you um, go to buy the one course, it gives you an option to buy um, volume one at a discount. Yes, too. yeah, so get as, a package as well as there's links for your uh, for your subscription stuff yeah. in there. Um, if you're a member, you should have gotten a coupon code for um, being able to get a discount. This guy, we got we got a solid little team over here. We call them the A-Team. It's the A-Team. It's the Brett Papa Dream Team. Wow, oh, they're so yeah. good. No, we have some good people that are, they're working hard at what they do as, as much as we work Show them on, love, people. They're teaching, really sure. amazing yeah. people. Um, the more the more you support us, the yeah. more we support them. And by know? the way, you know, a lot, of, yeah. a lot of times people think that people like us, you know, have a bunch of people and it's just, there's three people in the whole yep. thing. So it's either me, uh, Mary, or Steve are going to get back to you and that's it. So... Yep. Um, when questions gets answered, you know, if, if it has a little thank you, Brett, I, I responded to you. And if not, it's going to be Mary. Yeah. That's I mean, it. I, I still, like, I'm a one-man show. I'm yeah. uh, all the stuff going on on my channel, on my site. I'm, you know, responding. Well, over here, well. you're, you got a three-man team. I got a three, yeah, exactly. No, it's been great. It's been really cool to, like, actually get together with a small group of people to, to talk about the vision yeah. and what we're going to do next to, like, um, and how volume two is going to take shape, which I can't wait. That's fingers awesome. crossed. Volume two will happen early next year. Yeah. Like very early. Um, so that's, what's cool is, you know, as, as things get better and, you know, we're able to do this together more, it'll come together faster, hopefully. Um, but somebody said they, they have trouble with all the online stuff available. It's a common question. Um, with all the online stuff available, like kind of where's the best place to start if they subscribe to your um, you know, it depends, membership. it, it kind of depends what level you're at. Like I have courses inside the, well, uh, they're on the site as well, but like there's uh, blues soloing secrets, there's levels. So there's a mm -hmm. level one and a level two, um, caged, although the playing is, um, a little bit more geared towards an intermediate player the the concept of the course, um, people will be able mm -hmm. to, to get to. And so, and then, and then in the membership, I'm going to do a more like A to Z approach where I'm going to really start um, giving people, you know, here's where you start and then, you know, give people spots. If you're an intermediate player, you can go into this world and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, 
that's also the thing that I find real interesting is you as a player teacher that have built this sort of platform to bring in other people like myself. It yeah. covers bases that aren't necessarily in your wheelhouse yeah. or in your style of teaching, yeah. you know, and I think that's, as your as your world grows, yeah. they're going to get more access to people like me and Jeff McElhane. Yeah, Calvo, well, I mean, that's kind of my idea is just you know. to give people a solid foundation and let you guys yeah. spin it off into different, you know, directions. Right, for sure. Um, I love that, you know, there's a gentleman on here, Jason, Jason, who joins my stream every Thursday. He says, not many positives from this crazy world crisis, but interacting with Corey and Brett and, of course, BB Ninja has helped me mentally and creatively as well. I mean, I say we're in the happiness business, yeah. and that's what it is, because I've never gotten more positive feedback from anything I've ever done yeah. than doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, you know? and, it's awesome. And uh, I try to cut it as straight as I can, yeah. because... I'm never going to play like you. Mm -hmm. You're never going to play like me. And what we're going to share information yeah. that makes us better at yep. some point. So that's kind of totally that's what agree. we're doing for sure. Um, yeah, getting lots of love, lots of thumbs up. Um, don't know how many of that happened yet, but um, yeah, this has been awesome. This has been awesome. You want to jam? Let's do it. I'm Give gonna me go that. here to here to here. Give it to me, Major Man. All right. <laughs>
a little more light, a little more. <laughs> nice. Yeah, dude. Well, let's awesome. end it there, you guys. Thank you so, thank so, you. so much for hanging out in the very first live stream. Thank you. Corey, help me. The oh, live man. Stream. So it was awesome. So fun. If you guys like the stream, make sure to let us know, and uh, I'll try to do this uh, a lot more regularly. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate all the support. All right. Catch Take you care. next time.